Hey, so let's talk about endometriosis. This is, in my opinion, probably one of the worst things any woman could ever experience in her entire life. Um, and I think I experienced that for many years. So I wanna preface this whole video by saying I was never diagnosed with endometriosis as I think are, uh, most women that are suffering from this. You actually need an actual surgery with like a camera and other things going inside of you to see if you have this. However, if you've never had that, that doesn't mean you don't have endometriosis. It doesn't mean you don't know what um, terrorizing menstrual cycles are. So let's talk about this for a second. This, I will talk about this on my channel until I'm blue in the face, until I can help at least one other woman uh, or teen or whoever, because it's the worst. It's literally the worst. Someone commented on my channel saying, They've had uh, a kidney stone and they've had endometriosis and they would rather have a kidney stone than have the pain of endometriosis. And I've never had a kidney stone, but I agree. I agree 100%. I've also heard another girl say that she broke her shoulder and that was less painful than her endometriosis. So what is endometriosis? Endometrium is a lining that grows in your uterus and it can grow outside of your uterus into places it's not supposed to be and it is very hormone sensitive, this endometrium. So when you have your menstrual cycle, um, it can be out of control. Basically the pain is unbearable. Okay, so let's talk about this. I experienced my first, from my recollection, I'm almost 40, and when I was 13, I remember experiencing the first, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, experience of this. And um, it was excruciating, it was terrible. And I remember going home and I think, I don't, you know, it was such a long time ago. I just remember, I think I went to an extremely hot bath, like, you know, one that melts your skin off. And then just going into my parents' bed and rolling around uh, in the bed for hours. Now, this is just my recollection of something that happened so long ago, but I have terrible story after story after story. So I want to, I, like I said, I'll talk about this till I'm blue in the face. And I'm talking to you right now. Uh, you there lady who has this also because I believe you and I understand when nobody else does or just other women that have this so I was listening to dr. Natalie Crawford on YouTube and endometriosis could either be um, genetic and or she said autoimmune so I'm gonna blab a little bit more about this but I want to tell you at the end I'm gonna tell you what I did which dramatically helped me uh, crazy two things uh, Okay, so let's talk about genetics. My mom had terrible menstrual cycles. My grandmother had terrible menstrual cycles. And so now here I am 13 years old with this problem uh, and then even going throughout my life with these terrible cycles. Sometimes I think it might've been easier than others because I don't remember every single cycle, but I do remember very specific instances, many instances of this being terrible. Um, where you're in bed. By the way, if you're if you are ever writhing around on the floor, that's apparently not normal. You could have fooled me. I thought it was. Uh, if you have diarrhea during your menstrual cycle, also not normal and possible indication. Uh, painful sex, by the way, also another indication. Uh, there's so many indicators of this that we just like the women that have it just gloss over and maybe you're like me and thought that it was totally normal and that's why you never saw a doctor about it you thought it was normal and that every woman just can deal with it and you can't that's what i thought i thought i just couldn't tolerate pain and my friend who's a nurse was saying you probably have a very high tolerance of pain <laughs> anyways so let's talk about this a little bit more have you had any of those experiences i would like to know in the comments your experiences have you been diagnosed with endometriosis what did the doctor have you do also, or have you never been diagnosed with endometriosis, but you have anything that I just described, let me know in the comments. We need to help each other out. I would really appreciate it if you would like this video because that's gonna help the algorithm get it out to more people. And if you comment, uh, I will comment back. I wanna talk to you about this. Okay, so during my 20 years of menstruation from the age of 13 to about 33, when maybe 34, when I got pregnant, um, yeah, pretty much terrible the whole time. Maybe easier when I was on the pill. Uh, by the way, not a good recommendation. Don't go on the pill. That really screws up your hormones. Um, like that, I had kids. So I want to also say that um, infertility is a 
symptom of endometriosis. I want to say that I, and this is going to go back to diet in a second. I think that I didn't have a problem and you're going to think I'm crazy getting pregnant because I loved eating cheeseburgers. And like I said, I will get to that in a second. Um, and I want to know also during your menstrual cycle, what food did you crave? I used to crave chocolate and I used to crave red meat, uh, carne asada tacos and burgers. So like I said, I'm going to get to that in a second. So uh, 34, have my first child, uh, and then I was pregnant again 11 months later, and um, subsequently nursed my second baby for many years. And I did not have a menstrual cycle for two years, and I forced it to come back because having no menstrual cycle to me was worse than my than my excruciatingly painful periods. I just felt terrible not having a menstrual cycle. So two years after I studied something called seed cycling and oil cycling as a recommendation and I got my period back. And when my period came back, it was 100% different. I don't remember what the few menstrual cycles were like between uh, when I got it back after my first child and my second child. I don't think they were terrible. But after I had my second child, I didn't have a period for a very long time. At first it was cool and then it was not cool. When you don't have your menstrual cycle at all, uh, your hormones are super out of whack wasn't terrible as it was before. And I've heard other women say this, that once they've had a child, their period was not the same as it was before. However, I did still have cramping. I did still have that, do you have the weird leg thing where you're, you have this weird pulling, stretching, cramping, pain in the knees when you have your period? I, I did have that. I still have had cramps where I've had to be in bed, but it was nothing like it was before. So now let's talk about four months ago. Four months ago, I was super fed up with my weight. I was totally, uh, I had terrible like IBS symptoms. Again, I didn't get it diagnosed. I just, you know, on and off years of diarrhea, um, just really annoying stuff. Um, and I have stories about that. And if you've looked at my other YouTube videos, I talk about that. So I started a very low carbohydrate, almost eliminating everything out of my diet. And, um, People like to call it the carnivore diet. And please don't click away. Please keep listening because your mind is going to be blown in about one second. So uh, three weeks into eating this way, I've eliminated almost everything. I think I eliminated seed oils. Maybe I ate at a fast food place one time. Maybe not even. Um, so three weeks into, I think, eliminating everything and where I was only really eating, you're not going to believe it, beef, butter, bacon, eggs, uh, my, my menstrual cycle rolled around again and I had zero pain. I had nothing. I was like, what is going on? How is this even possible? Beef, butter, bacon, eggs, maybe some chicken, maybe some fish. I don't really recall. I think it was basically beef, butter, and bacon, and eggs. And so, by the way, all these foods are apparently terrible for you, right? You keep hearing, don't eat a lot of beef, don't eat a lot of bacon, don't eat a lot of butter, don't eat a lot of eggs. These are high in cholesterol, high in saturated fat. Well, what the F just happened? How did I just have a menstrual cycle where nothing, I had zero pain. I, I felt a relief. I've never, I don't know if it was a mental, a spiritual relief, or if my body actually physically felt relief from just having a menstrual cycle that was like normal. So how can this be ladies? How can this be? So um, I'm not a doctor, I don't know, but I think that by eliminating seed oils, uh, corn oils, uh, fast food restaurants, um, making my food at home, not eating any refined carbohydrates. I did still have some fake sweeteners in my coffee, like urethritol, but even that didn't affect it. So if you eliminate everything for a month and try to eat beef, butter, bacon, eggs, you can eat whatever animal products you want. Probably not cheese. Don't eat so much cheese. Um, you might be surprised. I would also say as an aside, um, try evening primrose oil. If you track your menstrual cycle from day 14 forward or from when you ovulate forward, take evening primrose oil, maybe like a hundred, a thousand international units. Someone recommended that to me once and it did help. Um, by the way, also how many crazy like advices have you been given about your period in your life? I would really like to know and I would like to know if it helped. Uh, and I know that you think right now I'm giving you super crazy advice. Um, but if you were like me, you're probably at wit's end. You probably don't want to deal with another month of pain 
And I can't promise this will help because we do have the variable that I had kids and my cycle did change. Um, even if I still had problems with my cycle, like now I know that any pain is not normal. Zero. There should be zero pain. So let's go back to what I was talking about eating. Um, the beef, the butter, the bacon, and the eggs, animal foods, high fat animal foods though. You can't go lean. You have to eat high fat animal foods. And I think that's the key to making this work. Um, you need to eat the high fat animal foods and you need to try it for like 30 days, 60 days. And I know it sounds crazy. You've got to cut out the vegetables also. Just try it. If you are at wit's end and you don't want to experience that pain anymore, I recommend you try this at least for a weeks, couple months. Try for a couple months and see what happens. See if it changes at all. And like I said, I'm not a doctor. We have variable that I had kids and it changed a bit. But I know now that you're not supposed to have any pain. You're not supposed to feel anything. Um, I will say that the last couple cycles, I think it was like two cycles ago, I had like very weird, intense cramping for like an hour. And it like went do 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 It was like then it was like nothing as if nothing happened. And, but that wasn't even during my period. Um, that was like during my like ovulation time, I think. I actually thought I was pregnant. I thought I was, but I wasn't. Um, I thought I was having like uh, cramping, you know, the, the pre-cramping, what is it called? I thought I was having implantation cramping, but no, I was having like middle schmerz maybe. Uh, so, you know, the cramping that happens with your ovulation, which I've never really had before. And then something similar happened again with the cramping. And then last cycle, a day before my period, I had like intense cramping where I'd like stop what I was doing. I had to sit down. I had to collect my, <gasps> my breathing. And then the next day my period started. So that's really funny that those, I think it happened like three times, maybe four times, some funny cramping that was separate from actual the day of my menstrual cycle starting. But even this last time with my menstrual cycle starting, a little discomfort I remember, but basically nothing. Guys, this is insane. I think that we're not supposed to have any pain. I get that there's cramping, but I think it's supposed to be almost nothing. I think God intended us not to be in pain, even though we are so well educated that we're supposed to be in excruciating pain. And that's just our job as women. And it's terrible. And I think it 100% has to do with our diet and the crap that we're eating and the crap that we're supposed to be eating per the food pyramid and these franken food re refined carbohydrates and just get it all out of your diet just you know i'm nuts but just try this for a month just eat you know high fat animal products if you want to keep it simple do the beef the butter the bacon the eggs if you are eating like the standard american diet it might be a little rough and maybe you want to ease into it booting it and eating mcdonald's why don't we get that out of there first Get, get the refined carbohydrates, the fast food, and the seed oils out of the diet first. And add more beef, more butter, more bacon, more eggs. Uh, learn how to cook a steak so it's good. Uh, honestly, the rarer, the better. If it's totally gray, it's going to be tough and you're going to think it's disgusting. But if you like it, just cook it not as much as you think you need to cook it. And then cook it rarer and rarer as you like it. More and more. But maybe just do ground beef, eggs beef, butter. I'm going to keep saying these things because these are the things that I ate. And then I was like, what is going on? You're not supposed to have pain. How is this possible? I'm almost 40 and I'm figuring this out for the first time in my life. And I hope that I can reach a 13 year old who doesn't have to experience what I experienced or a 16 year old writhing around on the floor where literally no matter how much you ask, nobody answered. What do I do? Okay. I'm telling you what to do right now. Please do it. Please change your pain in your life right now. I can't promise this is going to work. 100% no way can I promise that. But why not try? It might make a, a big difference in your life. And I really, I really hope it does. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if I'm crazy. Let me know if it's a good idea. Uh, please like, uh, please share this with someone who experiences any menstrual pain, let alone endometriosis. I think this would help anyone. Um, I was even listening to Dr. Klitz, Kiltz today, and he said this type of diet would help people with even PCOS, infertility, all of these things. And um, 
really the food that we have right now in the United States of America. I don't live in the U.S., but it's prevalent everywhere. These highly refined processed foods are really screwing our hormones up. So let's just go back to basic. Let's go back to eating how we used to eat 60 years ago, more than 50 years ago before all these Kellogg's came along and all these other weird foods came along and Nestle and blah, blah, blah. All right, let me know what you think. Uh, I will talk to you all later. I hope this helps at least one person. Let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you soon.